the thing that makes the thing that makes going to work the hardest for me is seeing a problem but not being able to do anything about it. But I think that more than anything, what I've seen in the building is just the demoralization of, of the educators. For the last like three or four years, morale's been at an all-time low. I know at least six teachers off the top of my head who left the profession completely because they couldn't support themselves or their family. Even though I knew what my kids needed, I couldn't possibly give them everything they needed within the constraints of the system, and it felt defeating. Um, we've been told over and over and over again to do less, or to do more with less, and people are burning out. One of the problems with the budget cuts is the fact that teachers are using their own money to buy um, supplies. Because if you see a kid who comes to school for you know two weeks with a hole in their shoe and the temperature is going to drop below 20, you're gonna buy that kid a pair of shoes. I bought shoes, I bought coats before. Day to day, you just never know if you're gonna be warm or not in your classroom. And not only are we getting less resources to deal with this problem that society has just kind of left just in our hands, but we're also now being told that we're the problem. No one cares, no one appreciates it, and you're under attack. So being an educator in North Carolina means feeling like you are constantly under attack. We're having more and more people get out of education, period. <laughs> no matter what I do, no matter how late I stay, no matter how many IEP goals I write, I'm still stuck with, with failing these kids. That all public schools are feeling the same pressure. It's, it makes you so angry. And those things have begun to be stripped away and we're, we're suffering and we're suffering and our kids are suffering. Everybody says give more money, everybody says they're going to help, but then they really don't. is really important to me that we don't have teachers that are working two and three jobs just to, to sustain themselves. So this is very important, you know, to me in that area. Organize 2020 doesn't just focus on education. Of course that's our passion, but we focus on all the other social ills that affect education. We're fighting, we're fighting a war against poverty and racism. Like that's, that's what we're in. It's not just about what is this going to do for myself as an educator? Or what is this going to do for my students? It's what is this going to do for our community as a whole? What is this going to do to make North Carolina great across the board? Like it's not, it can't stop at the door of the school. It's got to go into the community. The caucus is about shifting the work of the union. It's about focusing on um, frames of unionism that haven't been the focus of, of unions in, in really quite some time. Because we're going to be out in the streets, we're going to be out with our kids' parents, we're going to be out with our kids. When you really think about it, if you have the power structure to be able to take legal action whenever your rights have been violated, but you also have a mechanism in place that allows you to reach out to others and engage others in our efforts, that's a powerful combination. So this fight is not just the workers' fight. The fight for public education is just not the teacher's fight. It's everyone's fight. Educators should definitely be at the forefront of any type of reform. And definitely educators and teachers um, and parents are natural allies in this struggle for education. And my kids' parents can say things and do things that I can't say. And my kids can say things and do things that I can say. And I can say things and do things that they can't say. Ultimately, we all want the same thing for public schools or for students in this state. That's for them to have quality education. So remember specifically some real knockdown, drag out battles in the NCAE buildings over whether or not we should join the moral Monday protest because before we are specifically remember talking to leadership over there who guaranteed us that there they would not eliminate teacher assistant positions. We would get at least a 1% salary increase and uh, they would not come after payroll deduction for NCAE. And when that budget came out in July, all of that was in there. And so at that point, uh, my level of frustration, as you can imagine, was quite high. That next morning, I went into the office and I told my guys, I said, it's on.
And, and in the past, it's always been that something like this happens, NCAE files a lawsuit, and that's our approach, and it's limited to that approach. Now that we have a, a social justice caucus within our organization who is very, very effective, it's been critical to the success we've experienced in our lawsuit cases, particularly when you talk about the decline in sign movement. Every school district was going to offer 25% of its faculty based on some criteria that the state hadn't laid out, sort of a bribe, you know, give up your due process rights, um, you know, give up any kind of semblance of protection at work and we'll give you a $500 bonus. <laughs> and it just felt absurd. And it felt like one more thing. So not only are they pitting us against our parents and our kids, but now they're pitting us against each other. Uh, we do not believe that teachers should be competing against each other when we are working all together to benefit our students. So we decided to organize folks. It's to the fact that we not only had our court case filed, but on the other end, we were actually mobilizing members of the community, members in our school, educators, to actually attend school board meetings and speak out and show their presence. If offered a, 20, a contract, if you were one of the 25% in your, within your school that you would sign to decline that contract. We didn't have any power at the state level. Um, we didn't have a chip in the game with the General Assembly, but we did have lots and lots of power at local levels. So we just said, let's target local school boards um, and get school boards to come out against this because here's a moment where, you know, it's not always this, the case where educators and administrators and educa educators and central, you know, office staff are on the same team. But here was a really clear opportunity to have everybody be on the same team. So we thought, let's, you know, let's take advantage of that and get school boards to pass these resolutions. We could encourage our school board members to say that we, we don't support giving 25% of our teachers a raise when all of our teachers deserve a raise. We ended up surpassing every goal that we had, something like 50, 50 school boards um, took it up. And then, and then Guilford County uh, decided that they were going to sue the state over it and say that they weren't going to follow it. But they say that they're going to think about how they can have, they can provide due process rights, you know, for teachers locally and then give us a standing ovation. And it was, it was a really, really emotional moment, right? And it was like, okay, we're in a, we're in a different moment. We're in a different situation here. Um, and it just felt incredibly powerful. I was very pleased and it made me excited about the possibilities of other opportunities to change things within the system. But everyone is putting in the work. There is no leadership and then worker bees. We are all the worker bees and we're all the leadership. I do think you're right. I think um, teachers make natural organizers in that that is exactly what they do. They're constantly testing the, how, the waters of how people feel, where their students are at, how should I communicate this in a better way. It's the same way it works when you're organizing with adults. I believe it's the each one teach one um, and you know pulling someone else into making someone else aware of what's going on. Then you know you'll be able to speak, you'll be able to lead chats, you'll be able to do different things. You can get involved with 2020 at whatever level you're comfortable with. We want to push you out of your comfort zone but we also but, but we'll be there for you and I think that's the main thing is that we're constantly pushing ourselves to build skills that we did or didn't have um, but we're also constantly supporting one another. And so a lot of what I have done in NCAE is because of other people seeing in me something that I didn't see in myself and saying you're great, continue doing what you're doing, you're passionate about your work, you're passionate about our organization, you're passionate about children, you're passionate about educators. And this whole group of folks is about winning. Like we're not trying, we're not, there's no, we're not fighting a good fight. We're trying to win. When you organize, you rejuvenate yourself. 